The following program is video supplemental instruction. VSI is brought to you by the Teaching Center, UF's Learning Support Center, www.teachingcenter.ufl.edu. Okay, so for number one, this is the most typical of all three response problems you could have on the first exam for this class. Limit definition of the derivative problem. So remember that the limit definition of the derivative is the limit as h approaches 0. You do f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. So you have two points that are getting closer and closer together. h is the difference in between them. So let's use this for our function x squared minus 2x plus 3. So it's important to show all your work, meaning you need to be writing this limit as h goes to 0 every step here. So first, we take our f and we plug in x plus h instead. x plus h squared minus 2 x plus h plus 3 minus our just our regular function, x squared minus 2x plus 3. And that's all over h. So what we want to do now is simplify everything and try to combine all like terms. So x plus h squared is x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. That's if you foil that out. Remember, this is a common form, the x plus y squared. You just have 2 times the middle term. Here we get minus 2x minus 2h and plus 3. And we can distribute the negative sign to all the stuff over there so that we get minus x squared plus 2x minus 3. So everything is distributed and expanded as much as we can. Let's see what cancels out. x squared minus x squared. That cancels out. You should be wary that pretty much everything that doesn't have an h should be canceling out here. Plus 3 minus 3 minus 2x plus 2x. You notice everything that's left has an h, that's how it should always work out. So keep that in mind when you're doing these problems. You should end up having everything that has h is left over. So we get 2xh plus h squared minus 2h left over. So remember that this is the limit as h goes to 0. So we can't plug in 0 because we have an h on the denominator. However, if everything has an h, we can cancel out an h. So we get rid of an h from everything. If, you want, if you'd rather see that as factoring out an h of everything and then canceling out, that's fine too. But what we're left with, limit as h approaches 0 of 2x plus h minus 2. Now we definitely can plug in 0 for h because we don't have a problem of dividing by 0 or anything like that. This term just becomes 0, then it goes away. We get 2x minus 2 as our um, f prime of x. This is our derivative. So part b says to write the equation of the tangent line at x equals 0. So remember that this point, or what that tells you, f prime of x, that tells you the slope of the tangent line. So at any given x. So the slope that we want is when x equals 0. So we just plug in 0 for x. We get that our slope is negative 2. So this is for part b. So we get that our m is negative 2, and we knew that the x was 0, so we just need the y, but the y we could just use the original function for. So y equals 0 squared minus 2 times 0 plus 3 we get that y is 3. 
So we have this slope as negative 2, the point is 0, 3. So it says to just write it in slope-intercept form. We can just say y equals mx plus b. So our y is 3, our m is negative 2, our x is 0. So you can see there, since this is 0, b is 3. So that means our equation is y equals negative 2x plus 3, our slope, and our y-intercept. Um, so using the limit definition is the long way. You're going to learn a faster way for the derivative later in the class. But um, remember that the derivative always gives you the slope of the tangent line at some particular x, and which you're always going to be given in a question like this. The Teaching Center, UF's Learning Support Center, www.teachingcenter.ufl.edu.